This is an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. Brian Michelle is helping aspiring young astronomers to be able to gaze into the heavens. He is building telescopes that he creates with a 3D printer. It all began as a hobby, but eventually became a way to connect with his 11-year-old niece, who took a similar interest in his love for stargazing, and it grew from there. To talk about his innovative telescopes, Brian joins us via Skype from Guelph, Ontario. Hi, Brian. Peter, thanks for having me on. Thanks for being on the program with us. How did this begin for you to decide that you were going to make a 3D telescope? Well, as you said, I had an interest in astronomy, and I had a growing interest in 3D printing. So when my niece asked me how she could have a telescope, I thought, I can combine my hobbies. I can use 3D printing and some CAD design skills that I was also developing to design her a telescope and and print it. And you just didn't stop there. You made the telescope for your niece, but then you went on to basically making telescopes for the community. Yeah, exactly, Peter. So it actually worked really well, the telescope. We, we took it out, and it was really easy to use. And for somebody like my niece, who had never used a telescope before, she was pointing it, within minutes, she was pointing it at targets. And I thought, you know, this is a great way to introduce telescopes and astronomy to new uh, users. And so I decided to make some more. And uh, the idea of having 10 telescopes for our local community was born there. One of the things I'm, I'm assuming makes it a lot easier, besides the fact that you, you print them yourselves, is the fact that it's probably a little more durable, especially for kids. I know when I bought a telescope for my young nephews many, many years ago, they were always concerned about the fragility of it and the expense of, of, of such a unit yeah. in the hands of a child. I- exactly, Peter. Yeah, so when I was deciding what materials to use, uh, I actually arrived at a plastic called ABS, ABS plastic. And it's the same plastic that's used in your car bumper or, you know, actually under the sink used for your plumbing. You know, it's very, very tough plastic. So that was that was certainly one of the design criteria was how can I make this robust enough that, you know, well, and, and the other thing is, even if even if they could somehow damage a telescope made of these materials, it's easy just to make new parts. That's it's one of the one of the key problems with servicing a lot of things today, telescopes included, is access to parts. But when you can just 3D print any of the parts, it's easy to service. So yeah, it, there were two two things going on there exactly: the the robustness of of the actual telescope, and then the ease of service. When it came to making the plans for this, did you make them from scratch or did you have preconceived plans or how did you go about doing that? Well, I'd been sort of working with telescopes for years, designing small components to enhance my own telescopes. And I'd also been working with some uh, amateur telescope making techniques over the years, including mirror grinding. That's something that was popular years ago with amateur astronomers, where you could grind your own mirror. I I started doing some of those things. I'd never designed a complete telescope from scratch, but I certainly had a lot of books, and there are a lot of materials available to somebody who wants to do that. So I I followed a lot of design practices, kind of fused a few things together. There was um, a telescope maker, John Dobson, and he started a design concept called the Dobsonian Telescope, which is, again, a really user-friendly telescope, but it's generally uh, you mount the box on the ground. I've got a smaller telescope than what he would use for, you know, more slightly younger users that don't want to cart around 80 pounds of telescope gear. So mine's up on a tripod. So it's kind of fused together a few things, but really the uh, the key design is a Newtonian reflector, which goes all the way back to Isaac Newton, of course. Now, the body of itself, of course, is how you you, you 3D print the telescope, but uh, how many of the components do you actually make for the telescope? Like you mentioned the mirrors, and, and what about the lenses? Do you make those, or do you purchase those, or how does that work? So I work with a supplier of the optical components, and they actually make those components for me and for this project. But yes, you're... you're 
kind of putting your finger on a key thing there is that I can't make the optical po- components in the kind of quantities and quality, at least not a, in a very fast manner. So there are some optical components that have to be purchased, but the body of the telescope, the mount, all of the all of the uh, motion components, all of those are 3D printed. Uh, also, the, the there's, we use a rack and pinion focuser. That's a metal component that we also purchase in. So there are a couple of components we purchase in, but I would say that nine over ninety percent of it is three D printed. And besides the fact that it's 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 very robust for kids and it's very durable. Beyond that, what's the difference in the cost? Say you were to go out and buy a telescope as opposed to just creating one on your three D printer. So there are lots of different levels of telescopes. We actually have adopted parabolic mirrors in our telescope and and really that optical component that that primary mirror determines a lot of the quality of what the telescope can do so certainly the 3d printed components aren't holding it back uh it's it's really down to the optics so i've been working with vendors to to make very cost effective and yet premium quality scopes so you'd have to spend probably i don't know 800 dollars or more to get into a, a telescope that performs similarly. Now, you might spend $350 to $400 to make one of ours. However, you do have to make, you have to build it yourself. So, you know, we're at about half the cost, but significantly more labor. But for some people, that's very appealing to, to build their own telescope. So here at the, Astro, the Blue Door Astronomy Library that we have here in Guelph, we have 10 of those telescopes pre-made, so you don't have to build one to use it here in Guelph, but um, we've opened it up as an open source design, and so anyone can 3D print these telescopes. They're going to be spending probably $400 to build one, and then probably, let's say, 12 hours or more to build it. It's not a small project. I would assume it would be a great project for an adult and a child to work together uh, to build, you know, that particular kid's telescope. I'm, I'm sure there's a sense of pride in saying, um, you know, I helped my dad or I helped my mom build this. Oh, absolutely, Peter. So just yesterday we posted an image. So we're, we were doing some astrophotography with one of these just as an experiment to see what it would do. And the images we got back... Uh, I showed to the volunteer who actually built that scope. She, her name's Emily, and she was completely floored. She couldn't believe that that telescope that she built with her hands had produced that image of the Whirlpool galaxy. Wow. So you have um, made more than the one for your niece. I I believe you made uh, 10, or at least the last time I saw the story, you had made 10 of these things. Uh, and you are putting out the uh, the blueprints for anyone else to print. How can people get the blueprints if they want to build one themselves? Well, if, if you go to 10telescopes.com, so T-E-N telescopes, one word, dot com, you will have all the links to get to something called GitHub, where anybody that uh, does an open source type of design like this, they'll generally have their designs and their plans on that site called GitHub. But if you just go to 10telescopes.com, the GitHub link is there. You can download everything that you need uh, to to make that telescope. We call it the Skyward 150 is the name of the telescope. How long does it take you to make one? So the printing takes about a week, although I'm bringing on some printers, some more some new printers online. Um, we're actually I just I just brought I just purchased materials to do 25 more. We're kind of looking for sponsors because I'm doing this out of my pocket and it's it's not inexpensive. So I've got 25 more scopes ready to go. It takes us about a week to build one, uh, sorry, to print one. And then a volunteer can assemble it in about 12 hours, uh, maybe eight hours. Em- Emily's our fastest scope builder. She could probably put one together in about eight hours, I think, including all the collimation and stuff. Have you heard from any telescope companies? No, no, not really. I think that... Um, that it's in a slightly different realm, you know. It's there. There's it's very much a commercial offering that they have, and this is more of a community outreach and open source effort. So we're in two slightly different worlds. I also find they just look really neat. They're colorful. Uh, they're 
they're different and they're very eye appealing before you even get a chance to use them. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Uh, well, so it's it's really funny. Sometimes when the volunteers are building them and they take them outside to test them, the neighborhood kids are coming and running and we, we name our telescope. So like you say, we use different colors. So we have one that's kind of got a, a pink and a white motif and that one's called Barbie uh, with the popularity of the movie recently. And then we have one that's all black and it's called the Dark Knight. We've got the one that's black and green and it's the Matrix. So we've got all these funny names and, and different color schemes going on. And yeah, it does attract some attention, like you say. Well, it's, it's a, a brilliant idea. And um, I would assume that once that w- once you started doing this just for your niece, you didn't realize uh, how big this could get and, and how beneficial it could be for not only your community in Guelph, but even beyond. I really hope that that's true, Peter. I hope that some other communities start adopting this model. And it, it's actually really fun having volunteers coming together we have our own little volunteer community of telescope builders now. I'd love to see other communities have that. And then the pride when those telescopes go out the door to schools and, and individuals that are using them and they're, they're so happy. I would, I would love to see it uh, expand beyond just our small community. Again, it's brilliant. And people can go to the website, as you mentioned, 10telescopes.com. And 10 is spelled out, T-E-N, telescopes.com. Uh, Brian, thank you very, very much for taking the time to be on the program with us. Thank you so much, Peter. Brian Michelle, who prints out 3D telescopes on a printer. You too can do the same if you get the plans, and you can find out more information on Brian's site. And of course, you can go to my website at thestufffile.com, check out the show number for this program, which is show number 0756, and you'll find the link to Brian's site. You've just heard an exclusive excerpt from the Stuff File program with Peter Anthony Holder. To hear any or all of the full hour-long shows, visit thestufffile.com. Stuff is spelled S-T-U-P-H. That's thestufffile.com. A presentation of Flying Fish Communications.